Hello friends, this is Scott and Mr. Lincoln. He needs a haircut badly, as you see. <laughs> We're down in my Salt Lake City office and I decided to do a video today on spontaneous combustion because I've been doing a lot of videos on hot composting and people are concerned that, you know, if they make hot compost, could it catch on fire? The answer to that question is yes. In the 35 years or so I've been making compost, have I ever had a compost pile or any pile of materials ever catch fire? No. And there's a reason for that. There's several, I'm going to talk about several reasons, but I've got the definition of spontaneous combustion up on my computer here. So I just want to kind of read a couple lines to you here. Okay, spontaneous combustion can occur when a substance with a relatively low ignition temperature, such as hay and straw and leaves, okay, begins to release heat. Now, in the middle of a compost pile, you have bacterial fermentation, okay, which is that, that's where the materials are interacting and they're starting to break down and, they, and it releases heat. And what happens is, it needs to have several things for that to happen for it to, be, to become hot compost, which I've told you about. You need brown materials, green materials, you need oxygen, and you need water. And the, the topic that's the most relevant kind of in this uh, video is volume, okay? Now, you'll see in the news once in a while a big compost bin facility or a compost making facility will, will go up in smoke. You know, it'll just it'll spontaneously combust. What that really means is that the internal temperature is being created higher than the relate that the temperature can be released to the atmosphere, okay? So you're talking about a big pile. Now in a compost pile or heap, it's the middle of the pile that's heating up. That's where all the chemical reactions are, or most of them are, are working and creating the heat. Now, if you have a ton of volume sitting on top of this mass, big mass of, of heat, and it can't escape, then what happens? Okay, you'll get kind of what they call, in this, they call it a thermal runaway, which is when the internal temperature rate release, or is raised higher, then the, then the heat can be dissipated into the atmosphere. And if you have low ignition source materials on top of that pile, then that's where you're gonna get spontaneous combustion, which is you know the act of even static electricity. You know, a mouse running through leaves could uh, create enough of a, of a spark for that to, just to go and just to, to start on fire. And then you got a runaway fire. You've got a whole mass of material that's now ablaze, okay? And what happens in a big composting facility, it's pretty scary because it can really get out of hand, okay? Am I worried about spontaneous combustion in my Utah climate? I mean, we are a desert climate, we're dry, okay? But some things that I do uh, really kind of, I don't know, I won't say eliminate, because it could happen to me, but it's really kind of, it would be a rare occurrence for me to ever experience, uh, you know, spontaneous combustion because of the major factor is that I don't put huge volumes of material together. I'll be watching YouTube videos. I know I was watching a Justin Rhodes video the other day where he was piling up a bunch of chicken compost into a huge pile and thinking that's a great idea. Well, it might be, but I hope there's not any, any low ignition materials that end up on top of that pile because what he could end up with is a, is, a, is, a, is a fire, is a compost fire. Okay, the way I make compost is that, again, I, I create, I layer materials, you know, brown materials, green materials, the air is added as you're adding material or turning the material, and you can add water, you know. The way I do it is I only use a three by three by three or three by three by four pile. That's about as big as I, I make. And then if I have more material, what do I do? I, I use a bin, so I put it into the next bin and I start a new pile. So therefore, you got those piles are side by side, but they don't have to be. You can make piles and separate them out to be you know more safe if you're concerned about you know in really dry environments. But I'm not going to make a big old you know 10, 12 foot pile with the types of materials, the low ignition source materials that I'm using, which is leaves, grass clippings, and hay and and, and those types of things, okay? Those are not something that you want to big, huge piles on, okay? But the thing to remember about compost the most is you need all those things pretty much to, to create hot compost. So if you have a, just say a big pile of, of one thing, like you have a bunch of leaves, okay? And they're not mixed in with grass clippings, let's just say they're just leaves. So if you pile those up into a big pile, you know, you probably have air in it, you might have a little moisture, okay? You have brown materials, but you don't have any nitrogen, you have no green, therefore that material most likely will not heat up, okay? It will not, it doesn't have that, that degree that it needs, you know, you need all of them, right? But when you mix all those materials together and you create a formal thermal mass in the middle of your pile, okay? And again, it'll, it'll the bigger the pile, the bigger the thermal mass. And if you create a bunch of heat, you're gonna be drying out the materials on top. And what could happen is that internal heat could ignite, okay? It could cause ignition because again, there's more heat being created inside that it can release. You have low ignition, Materials on top, such as leaves, grass clippings, they can definitely start on fire and you got, a, you got yourself a big problem, okay? So the way I 
And I'm gonna show you some slides here, but uh, it's all about the amount of volume that I use. Okay, I think that's the key. I talked about in my last video that you need the volume to create the hot compost. And I showed you how, you know, even in that little three by three by four bin, you know, every level, as I was continuing to add materials, would get hotter and hotter to the point where I was above 161 to 163 degrees. That's getting to be a very high thermal temperature. Okay, if I was sitting, that could start a fire in my bin with, with the materials mounted up. So I'm at risk right now. It's the, the materials are as heaping as they're going to be, and that could definitely, you know, could, could ignite something. I don't have the volume of materials there, so if it did ignite, it's not going to do a whole heck of a lot. Okay, it's kind of out by itself. It's, uh, you know, I'm not, it's, it's not next to any buildings or anything that would, would cause it to, to, to be a real hazard unless the wind was kicked up or something and, and it caught another structure on fire. So, again, I use my, I put my compost away from other places, okay, other materials that are combo, you know, combustible. You know, I do have the, the supply of leaves right next door, so yeah, that could, the fire could transfer to that, but that's just one plastic bin and that would burn up, you know, rather rapidly. But the other thing I do is I always try to wet the materials on the outside of the pile. Again, water is a necessary component for the chemical reaction of hot compost in the middle of the pile. Okay, I, I spritz the top of the piles very, you know, very often when I have a hose out, when I'm watering the animals or whatever, because I want to have that wet. Okay, it doesn't have to be soppy wet. I don't want anaerobic conditions, whereas there's no oxygen in the material. But again, wet it, wet it down, uh, you know, control your volume, wet the materials on the outside down. And then as you flip the materials from bin to bin or pile to pile as you're mixing it, that material naturally shrinks, as I've been showing you in my videos. I've been continuing to have to add more materials to just try to build an initial pile where I could get it to the right heat that I wanted to start with, okay? The heat being to kill weed seeds and pathogens. And that material will bake for, you know, seven, ten days. I mean, I've had hot temperatures for weeks with this material. Every time I add more material, I get a little bit hotter temperatures to the point where now I'm, I'm at the hottest I can, I can get. But over time, that material will shrink, okay? And then as I flip that material into the next bin and the next bin, It'll continue to heat up again, but just not quite as hot. The volume will shrink, which makes it a safer pile because I'm not going to have the big thermal, you know, dynamic thing that, that, that could, could create trouble for me. I was the most concerned I've ever been with having spontaneous combustion was a couple years ago when I, I got the, the tree service uh, cuttings or wood chips from the neighbors and I had them dump in my yard. And it, I don't know, there must have been you know, over 20 cubic yards there, probably 20 to 30. It was a big pile of wood chips. And that tree, okay, this is a living tree, has all the green, all the brown, all the air and the water right there. Okay, so we mix all that stuff together and in a hot summer, and I'm not watering it or anything to, to watch it. It's in my driveway next to my cars. Could that be a big problem and, and start a fire? Absolutely. So again, I'm going to show you, I'm just going to kind of walk through some, some, some of the basics of just, you know, showing you the volume difference in the heat and then what to watch for. But again, wet the tops of the pile because that's important just to keep that moist. So in case there was something happening, you know, you would, uh, you know, you'd be able to you know, hopefully not have it, you know, combust. But again, you got to control that volume because you don't want a big old huge thermal mass that has no way to escape heat. And then you've got dry materials on top. You're just, you're just asking for trouble. So let's go to my, I'm going to go do some uh, past shots of my uh, compost bins and just show you the building process. Again, to show you the heat, show you where I'm at now. I'm at the most risk right now. Okay, I'm in Salt Lake City. I'm not down there. It's cool temperatures. Okay, if it was 100 degrees in the in the summer and that you have that external you know heat source in, in, on top of the internal heat source, I could I could have a spontaneously combusted uh, pile. It could happen. But again, I'm not going to do you know I'm not going to risk it because I'm not making huge huge piles. So people that pile a whole bunch of different you know browns and greens and have it all nice and wet and everything else. It does a great thing, you know, it's a great compost pile, but boy, you might get yourself in some trouble if that, if that heat cannot be dissipated. So let's, uh, let me go through some video and uh, show you exactly again what, as I built the pile and, and how that heat changed. And then where I'm going to go from here, as I turn the piles, it'll, it'll heat up again, but the material will shrink. It won't heat up as hot. It'll continue to break down, but it'll be a safer pile because it's less volume. So, so let me go take, let's go take a look at what I got. To look at my basic setup. I do have the worm compost bin there, which is you know, no risk of fire. It's just a carbon material in there. I do have the storage bin where I place my leaves, which could burn if something was to catch on fire, but that's a very small volume. That's just for, for convenience to have them close at hand. So again, something I can move around, not a, not a big deal. But I'm storing most of my leaves in plastic bags on the other side. And again, they're in, you need to have all the ingredients to cause a problem. So, I mean, if these, if these carbon source have moisture in them, uh, and even nitrogen, they're not going to do anything because they have no oxygen because they're in a plastic bag. So, so storing leaves like that is perfectly safe. 
Um, so no, no threat there. So again, they're across the way from my compost bin. So I'm using a three bin system, but these could just be three piles too. I mean, if you didn't have a formal bin, uh, you could do it you know, any, any way you want or with any kind of structure you want. But again, I have three bins and this is just an old bin I brought from the school garden. It was of no longer any use there and I uh, just brought it down here. And there's a brief look at how I layer stuff. I do brown on the bottom. I do six to eight inches of brown and three inches of green. Another six inches of brown, another two to three inches of green. And I do have my leaves there. I have, these are all the ingredients you need. And I have my water and I have my nitrogen. So all my chemicals are right here. None of them are volatile, you know, at this point. So it's so when you mix all this stuff together and then you add the volume, uh, that's, that's uh, significant. And uh, you don't control your thermal temperature, you got a problem. So there we go. I filled the bin up nice and tall after I'd uh, worked the bin some. And I learned that uh, when you try to build a bin in a day, it's just gonna keep shrinking. So I, you know, that's, that's all the nitrogen I had so to build the bin that much. There's a side look at, uh, at how much volume I have, but again, there's lots of air pockets in there and that material just will automatically just shrink down. And uh, so I'm gonna need to spend a few weeks uh, building this up. And uh, if I don't have the right amount of volume, uh, consistent volume, I'm not gonna have the temperature. So next day, uh, it was hot inside. You know, I reached my hand in there, it's probably 130 maybe, 25, 30 degrees. It's uncomfortable to have your hand in there, but it's not the thermal temperature that I'm hoping for. I had yet to bring my, th my thermometer down, so I didn't, I wish I would've had my thermometer. It could have been hotter. I could have had enough volume there initially to, to get the heat up, but it wouldn't have lasted because there's not enough volume to hold it in. So next time I mowed, I got my own new nitrogen source, and again, that material had shrunk down in, the, in a week, that, that much, so it's almost half down. So again, it took me several weeks to build this in up, just continuing to layer materials, you know, brown and green, brown and green. And I've not yet mixed the materials, I'm just layering, okay? So this is going to be pretty impressive when I show you how hot it gets, even when it's not, you know, mixed in. So uh, yeah, I just kept on every week and, uh, and add more leaves and add more leaves. And let's see what the temperature is that I that I got to. Okay, when I first built the pile, you know, it was it was ambient temperature. Okay, it's about one, it's about fifty eight degrees, which is the outside temperature. Okay, come back the next day, and I'm up to one. Let's see what I got here. One fifteen, one sixteen. So, yeah, it's not. I don't have enough core volume there. The, the the temperature is dissipating. It's not being held in the pile. Next day, I come out again, and I did make it up to 122, I think, 124, but that's still, you know, these compost piles can get much hotter than that. So finally, after several weeks, I got this built up the biggest I can possibly do, and again, this is where, how I left it. This is the biggest risk of, of spontaneous combustion right now. Okay, I've got the most mass I have. I've got extra volume on top of dry, you know, low ignition source materials. And the next day after I built that pile, it was one. It was it was almost as hot as it's going to get. One fifty eight. It looks like one fifty seven. So that's very hot. So again, I've got lots of dry leaves on top, but it's even shrunk then. And then the next day I come out again, and I did achieve o over that. So I'm at like one sixty four, maybe one sixty three, and that's as hot as you'd ever want it to be. Plenty hot to kill weed seeds and pathogens, but as you see, the material has shrunk. And so the moral of the story of not having. A compost pile that'll spontaneously combust is when you have the right ratios of materials mixed together, make sure that you control that volume. You know, and make sure that heat that's being created in the middle can dissipate. Okay, if it, if it can't, then you got a problem. So I would not be putting covers over compost and things like that because you could just be creating your own, your own bad situation. Don't store all your raw materials right next to the compost bin. You know, a lot of flammable materials, low ignition source materials like leaves, hay, grass, things like that. Put your compost bin cut out out away from everything else. Okay, not in there any structures or anything else. Have enough materials close to you that you can do the job. But you know, again, you can make piles, you know, large piles. But I would make them wider. I would not make them taller. Okay, you want that heat to dissipate. So you watch. You know, there's like Charles Dowding has bigger bins than I use. Okay, but his bins are about the same height. Okay, and I don't think he's worried about so much the mixture of ratios as I am, because I'm a big you know turner of compost that want to make compost fast. But the, the risk of that is you, you, know, you mix the right, right materials together and you got yourself a, a nice hot pile. And if that heat can't get out of that pile, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ignite whatever's on the outside. So anyway, volume's the key. Don't, don't make a big old huge piles of, of compost when, the, when all these materials are all present. You know, the, the carbon, nitrogen, air, and water are all present and the volume. You got yourself a, a potential problem. So keep your volumes down uh, and uh, wet, wet the pile. And again, uh, keep away from anything that's flammable. Don't store flammable materials you know, around your compost bin. So am I worried about compost fires? No. 
right now, again, I, my compost bin's as full as it's gonna be, you know, at least each pile. I've got two heaping piles right side by side. So if something was to happen, now would be the time. I'm not worried about it. It's very, uh, it's never happened to me. And uh, again, it's happened to people. So I'm not, I'm not discounting it. But if you keep your volume down to the point where you're like a three by three by three, three by three by four, or no taller than, you know, four feet tall uh, with a wider bin, I think you'll be, you'll be okay. Keep the materials on the outside moist so that it is, you know, it, it creates a less of a chance of that, uh, that, that material, you know, starting a fire. Because again, when you're baking material in the middle, all that heat dissipating is going to dry out all your outside materials. So every few days, give it, give your pile a good, a good drink. Well, thanks for watching this video. I hope this helps. I hope this alleviates some fears, uh, or at least give you some information about spontaneous combo combustion and compost piles. Thanks for watching.